Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, Brian Snyder joins us once again in the studio, right there, bugging Chachi. Uh, we got the App Store telling them to figure it out for themselves. Uh, no on love for on live, and we take a look at uh, the bot problems with UStream. This week's Awesome Cast. Welcome to the Awesome Cast, the 117. This is going to be a fun one, I can tell. With us, hey, I'm Sork. This is me, Sork. That's me right there. I got a new control pad. Where Let's are we, Sork? Goes. Where are we? We are in Pittsburgh, PA, in the studio, down here in the nether regions of Beachview. With me, <coughs> as usual, <laughs> is, is Chachi of InsertGoingToBegin.com. How you doing this week, sir? You started with <laughs> nether regions. <laughs> I know. I know. And you expect this to be a it clean went, a you, clean adult show. Is it, well, I'll wait till they see what I put at the end. Oh, oh man. My. Also with us back again from his many, many are travels. You, are you oh, also wait. in nether regions? I, I believe I am. Oh. Hey, Rob. Yeah? Did you uh, go to or have you been in nether regions recently? In the recent past. Well, actually, um, mm, the... The uh, who I gotta think of the family safe way to say this. No, you don't. <laughs> no, I don't. All right, so I I, I casually refer to Kansas City as um the uh the taint of the United States. You can say taint. Taint. Well, it's right next to St. Louis, which is the other part of the human body on the United States. Okay. Yeah, that's how that goes. So yeah, I just came back from the um. Uh, no apologies to anybody in Kansas City. It is, in fact, the worst, second worst place in the United States. Uh, the the meth capital, uh, idiot capital. I mean, it's bad. It's real bad. They don't have any teeth. Like the whole the whole city, there's <laughs> no just, teeth. They're straight Not up one. legitimately no teeth anywhere. Anywhere. Like anywhere. you go to the teeth store and the shelves are empty. <laughs> Excellent. Also with us on the couch is Brian Dabachek. Tech. Dabachek. <laughs> Dabba Czechoslovakian, Dabba Tech on Twitter. Oh, wow. How you doing? I'm I'm doing well. You're back. You're in studio. You are sporting the cobra. I know. Back in the Nether region. I should have worn I'm my you. my uh. This, you know, rather appropriate since we're watching Transformers when you show up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can't ask for a better time. We're laughing. We're having a good time. It's it's the best place to be. It's awesome. It's awesome. There you go. This is, of course, your awesome cast. We're over at awesomecast.com. Let's hit the button. Actually, there we are. Um, we're at awesomecast.com. You can drop us a line at contact at awesomecast.com. Um, or, uh, or you can tweet us at awesomecast. We're also on Facebook. We're on Google+. And we're here live every Tuesday, round about 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat room. Just like jo Dr. Scooter, who's uh, AJ, who joins us on the show from time to time. Bobby F. J. Town, Zero 2K is already in there. And everybody else that, that drops in through the night. Uh, so, yeah, this is where we talk tech. And uh, whatever's going on in the week, whatever whatever tickles our tech fancy. Yeah, that's where we're going. I think so, Rob was uh, hanging out with cheap hookers all week. Oh, no, was that what's happening, Rob? Man. I'm telling you. Nether regions, fancies <laughs> being tickled. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, I don't have teeth, so I guess that would be a good fit. Okay. Yep. You okay. sure you were in West Virginia? No. Okay. I prefer West Virginia over Kansas City. Mm. What? Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to call you out too, Kansas City. Your barbecue is a joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come at me. <laughs> you should have saw all their trophies at Ribfest. I think they buy the trophies. Whoa, the thunder's hitting. Whoa. So we may lose the show. So if we disappear now, you know why. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So um, let's get right into this real quick before we do lose power. Um, Frank sent us uh, many things this week that are not from the fancy. Yay! So yeah, well, actually, that I was going to kill his firstborn if there was a if there was a story from the fancy. <laughs> well, Rob, you didn't you didn't watch last week's show, did you? No, I didn't. That's Were the okay. That, from that's, fancy? that's fine. That's fine. Oh no, no reason, no reason at all. Um, at all. This he brings up. Apple has created a new uh, content dispute tool for the iTunes, iTunes App Store that encourages third-party developers to work out the problem amongst themselves. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> and it says, and then, and then and I think this is the the comment from Frank. Lead by effing example, then. Hmm. So. Uh, <laughs> 
has anybody looked into the actually this this I haven't read up too much on. Uh, has anybody looked into this this uh, tool they got out there? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Nope. So I mean. It's an interesting way. I mean, we've had how many problems with the app app store uh, where you know things are getting pulled or are not being seen in time uh, because they only have so many people work on this thing. Because really, Apple isn't that large of a company, right? For for all they're bringing in, they're not. A yeah, large company. I mean, if uh, uh, I'm pulling this out of out of my nether regions, if you will, but uh, <laughs> I vaguely remember hearing something that the team of people who approve apps is actually like twenty or thirty people. Mm-hmm. And that's completely, that's completely unmanageable for as much stuff that's going in there these days. I mean, I mean, what, they've had their like what billion app download or something by now, and uh, oh, sure, and how yeah. many apps are going in? You know, it, it's just it's just ridiculous. So, I mean, it, it's that's one way to manage it is is just let them do it amongst themselves. So, uh, so uh, at least it's not like a robot like uh, like we'll be talking about a little bit later about how that's been going when you automate the process um it's still people looking at these things in the long run which is probably the best way but it's going to be the slowest Mm -hmm. so um also from frank um (laughs) he says after our talks last week this is exactly the kind of of store that needs to implement implement this actually i think i mistakenly put this later in the uh rundown as well but uh yeah Walmart is testing a scan and go in store iPhone based purchase system. So they're doing the same thing that the Apple Store is doing. Not exactly the same thing that the Apple Store is doing. So okay. ba- basically, think I mean, you guys all have been to a Walmart or some other store where they do have like the self checkouts? Right? Yes. Sure. So basically, yeah. as you go through the store, you have this application on your phone and uh, you scan the products, it adds it up, it, t- it does your tally, pretty much just pre-scans everything you still have to go to one of those kiosks and i think you still have to be viewed by an employee uh to do the actual checkout so it's not you scan it it runs through your credit card with a pay button on the on the uh iphone and you walk out the door yeah it's called amazon it's called amazon i scan it if it's cheaper (laughs) (laughs) and it shows up my house two days later (laughs) this is already there i don't i don't need something else I what? look at it. If I think I can get a lower price online, I scan the barcode with Amazon. I hit buy. Two days later, it's at my house. Do you do that? like? You do you seriously like sit there and like say at Walmart or something? Yeah. And you've actually bought something right there on yep. the spot. Yep. If it is, if it is significantly cheaper and they offer Prime, what what what, what are you doing? <laughs> Sacha, what are you doing? <laughs> I was sneaking onto his camera. Uh, yeah, I I have scanned stuff and then just bought it right there. I've, so. I've never actually done that. Like I, I've I've checked stuff. Of course, now it's going to get a little bit more difficult since uh, Mr. Amazon is charging sales tax. So everywhere, I don't know. Well, it, it, I, think, I think it's state to state. Yeah, yeah at least uh, Pennsylvania now. They do now on Pennsylvania because yeah. last I knew, whenever they implemented the sales tax, September first. Like, September first, they started. Yeah. Yeah. I bought something the other night, and I'm like, extra two bucks or whatever it was. I'm like, sales tax? That's bullshit. <laughs> Right. That's all right. That's all right. You what, still get it, it in two it days. Yeah. Actually, they sent me a five dollar uh, promotional something or other. I just saw. So nice. Yeah. Like, like, sorry about the sales tax. Here's five bucks. I don't think they can say that. Um, but you know, thanks for being such a good customer and not bitching about our sales tax. But I don't know. It's interesting. Hey, um, this... you did not send us an email about sales tax. Here you go. <laughs> Wait, what? Amazon said, oh. hey, you didn't send us an email asking why you're being charged sales tax. Yeah. You have five bucks. Eh, eh, <laughs> they whatever. paid you for yeah. not emailing them. That's probably true, but yeah, I mean, with the Prime, though, I, I mean, I have in stores. I've, you you know. win. I mean, you win in the long run with Prime. Yeah. Now, now you, you're you somebody with a Roku box. It, this is completely offshoot here, but have you been using the Amazon Instant a lot more lately? Um, a little bit. Uh, as we discussed prior to the show, um, <laughs> I've gotten cable. <laughs> And cable was ruining my life. I haven't had cable in ten years, and the the shows and the it's just I, I honestly have I don't even think our Roku is plugged in right now because we just watch what's on cable and, That's a shame. That's and deteriorate a shame. our brains and it's just, 
I'm dumber. Like, I don't bring myself to watch too. Like, I think I've watched Pawn Stars on my Netflix, and that's about it. Yeah. But it, I mean, well, I noticed today there was a big blurb up. Apparently, they got a contract with uh, Epics, which oh, nice. a lot of the good stuff you see on Netflix comes from Epics. Like uh, the Stan Lee documentary, yeah. I saw the, some of the Kevin Smith recent <laughs> stuff, uh, Thor, Captain America, like bigger movies like Wait, that. Wait, on Netflix or Roku? Um. On, well, Netflix has already had that stuff, but Amazon Prime has just oh, signed a contract. Yeah. If you go to like Amazon.com today, they have a big thing about all the new stuff. I don't and, have Amazon and there's another Prime. thing, but you, you don't need it because it's really the same stuff as Netflix. Really, uh, the only thing, yeah. the only thing I really like every once in a while, like they have Red versus Blue, like they have like the entire series of that. Hit my mic. Uh, I've been watching West Wing, which isn't on Netflix, so it it fills in the gaps, and I have it anyways because I, I bought Prime anyways. So. I think West Wing was a uh, CBS show. Is that why? Oh, is that why it's hard for me to get on Netflix? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they've been putting more and more on on the Amazon even before you know I, when I was watching it. But some of mm-hmm. it was a little bit older, and if you you know wanted to waste some time or you know something like that, you could do that. But and, and I'm finding like movies I just saw like six months ago on Amazon are now popping up on Netflix's yeah. new movies. It's like, well, I just watched all those, you know. So I mean, it's everything cycles through. Like I know stuff like disappears from HBO Go and then it pops up on Netflix, or or Ooh. they're doing a run on TV, you know, or like Independence Day. Was in, like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> I was doing Scooby Doo ending. Anyhow, uh, to the chat room. Okay. Uh, Sonic Screwdriver said the Italians call that a bribe. Oh, the five dollars. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. AJ said I would like to be paid not to email people. Quote: You were going to email someone and call them and a-hole, but you didn't. Good for you. Here's five dollars. And your wife says, hi, sweetie. Aww. 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 Hello. <laughs> Alright, and we got another one here, uh, but real quick, um, we have one from AJ, who's in the chat room, it says, correction, my phone shipped with an ice cream sandwich. It had version uh, 4.04 when I got it. There was an immediate upgrade to Jelly Bean available. So, th- we were talking last week, Frank uh, brought up that he knows oh, oh that thunder's getting heavy. Yeah, I've got, like, really heavy rain over here. Um, it's coming. It's coming. Hopefully we stay on. Um, nope. Invest in power backup down here. Um, but, yeah, no, he said that he, he was surprised to find that the Nexus on the Google Play Store didn't says it still ships with the uh, with the ice cream sandwich. And, I, and yes, that's, they are all It's 105 in Dallas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what? It's 105 in Dallas. Why do you know that? Jen put it in the chat room. Is that where she is? Yeah. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Rob's got a copy of the uh, PS3 game Heavy Rain. <laughs> no, I don't think that's what. I don't no. think. I don't that think was that's Purple what Rain. <laughs> Matt said, "I hear thunder through the internet." <laughs> nice. All right. Here's a little bit longer one, AJ. Or, or no, this is Frank actually. Uh, he says. Uh, Actually, I want to try to pull up the email. This just occurred to me, and I'll probably forget it by Tuesday. Apple has dug themselves into a hole. They're setting a precedent Amen. that if you use a, pre- pa- I'm sorry, patented technology, uh, they will find find you and kill you slash sue you, assuming you don't have Liam Neeson leading the search. Uh, they've shown uh, through lawsuits with Samsung, HTC, Motorola, etc. that they mean business. The part where they've dug a hole is that they're going to they're going after Android. I'm not saying that they shouldn't protect their IP, but they have targeted those that use Android to create a system uh, for, a, for a phone to operate. I've mentioned a few times that I have rooted my phone and I'm using a custom ROM. Uh, to be exact, it's a bugless, it's, it is bugless beast Bugless Beast, sorry, uh, as created by Peter Alfonso. I just read through a few of the patents involved in the suit against Samsung, and I have them in my build of Jelly Bean. Uh, unified search, autocomplete, and the ability for the OS to recognize phone numbers, addresses, whatever, and act accordingly. I have all of those, and are uh, so our independent developers next. Is uh, the guy next to, is, is that guy next for the lawsuit from Apple? And he goes on from there. Um, so, I, yeah, so... I don't think so because there's no money. No, I mean the point is that so what Apple's doing is they're taking advantage of the flaws of the patent, the software patent system that we all know exists and we've talked about like way too much. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're basically, and if you read, if you actually read through all the litigation that happened in the trial and and, and uh, get into like the messages that were passed back and forth internally in both Apple and Samsung, they outright pretty much just looked at Apple's technology and said, we need to be more like these guys because everybody likes them, which, you know, 
in a creative sense is totally fine by me but Apple is taking advantage of the information they have and the stance that they have and the money that they have to put a hurting on Samsung. Not that it's actually going to put any kind of dent in the development of Android or any of that kind of stuff, but just to let them know that they're keeping an eye on them and they should really do a much better job at covering up the blatant copying that they're doing in their system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that, yeah, in that one especially, it was more of the blatant copying. Um, but but there are yeah there's definitely more with the patents uh, through everybody else they're suing as well. Yeah. So. I mean the the bigger message here is just that the patent system is still broken. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it hasn't changed at all. <laughs> now, but is there is there any chance? I don't know much about like how these guys you know roll with this in the open source. Are there protections under the open source, or are they just pretty much protected because of the lack of money? Like what any? the independent developers? Yes. They don't have any. Yeah, they don't have any money, so there's no money to be gotten. So, so gonna I mean, the only reason they would go after independent developers is if somebody was taking too big a bite of the pie, as it were. It's more of a mafia hitman move than a. Mm. So basically, pie. if you saw, if you saw like one of these developers get big enough that they were like looked like a threat, then they would go after them and pretty much you know sue them out of existence because they can put more money into it than they can. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you sue and you, you put out the fire or you acquire them for talent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which, you know, we see a lot. We see a lot. So, all right. Uh, I would just like to take a moment mm -hmm. uh, with some nerd news straight off the press. Hot off the press. Hot off the press. Hot oh. off the digital press. All ten seasons mm -hmm. of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle se series mm -hmm. is being released on DVD. I think mm. we were looking at the box set a little bit ago. Yes, like in the, on our Google Hangouts. It's in a. Uh, it comes in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle van. Mm-hmm. And it's all ten. It's twenty three DVDs. Mm. Just so you know. Yeah. You can pre-order it on Amazon for sixty nine ninety nine. <laughs> DVDs are dead. Yeah, who uses physical media anymore? Like, come on. You, you know what? I I still do. I still buy things, but it's. We know you have problems. That's it's not stuff, why we're here. But it's stuff I want to own. Like I want to own a copy of the Avengers. I want to own a copy of the Dark Knight Rises. You know. Porn. I and and <laughs> no, porn is completely digital at this point. Let's be honest. Uh, um, who pays for porn? But Michael, just because it's physical doesn't mean you own it, and does because it's digital doesn't mean you don't. I want to be able to put it in in <laughs> any time. <laughs> yes. Walk right in. Walk right in. I uh, want to put the physical disc into my DVD player, or most likely Xbox, whenever uh, I want uh, to. Uh, no? What? Does, does Missy know about this Xbox? Yeah. <laughs> I guess you she does with now. the married box. <laughs> oh, dear. Mm. Wow. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Wow. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right. That was that was uh slow. Yeah, like AJ said, softball. That was just lobbed in there. <laughs> slow Buzz. pitch. That was Yin's team. That was a <laughs> Yin, that was a Yin's team pitch. Put it in the Nether regions. Show title. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, that probably should be a show title. Put that down. All right. To get back <laughs> on right. track, Bobby, you gotta... Bobby says this is my sex box. Her name is Sony. <laughs> oh my. Uh, Sorry, right. Brian. Did, to get back on track, um, <laughs> <laughs> check out uh, defending. What is it? Defendinginnovation.org is a uh, something I'm kind of going through. It, it, I think I believe it is from the EFF. Uh, they're looking to you know have people you know to kind of promote ways to reform IP and uh, everything that goes along with that. Okay. So. If you're interested, you it's uh, defendinnovation.org, yeah. not defending. Oh, please. yeah. One, oh, a patent covering software should be shorter. No more yeah. than five years from the application oh, data. There you. Two, if the patent is invalid or there's no infringement, the troll should have to pay the legal fees. Oh, well, there you go. So it's kind of like a uh, patent bill of rights they're trying to implement yeah. here. It may so. not be the right way, but it's at least a couple of ideas to think about. and you know, Something to start a conversation and hopefully start pushing things in the right direction. I mean, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we can't push technology companies to fix the system. You have to, unfortunately, work with the politicians to fix it. Well, the then system. that's the other question, too. Like, um, is, now that Apple's had this crazy big suit that they've won against Samsung, is this a, a message for people to sit down and talk about this and say, look how messed up this is. We just got a billion dollars. 
what do we yep. do next? Or do we just move on to the next thing and get ourselves another billion dollars because we know how to work this uh, this messed up system? Mm, it's going to take a big, huge, bold move yeah. from... Well, what it's going to take is companies like... It will take like the support of the companies. Like, right. what The effect that we have on the government is not as big as the checks that Apple has to write as a taxpayer. Yeah. Uh, so what it's really going to take is a, uh, a federation, if you will, of um, of large companies like Microsoft and Apple and Samsung going to the U.S. government and and uh, uh, and basically pleading that somebody do something about the patent system, which has been done by a handful of people, but it has it, there's never been a very large movement. Yeah, of very large people. I mean, there's there's not there's not enough incentive for them to do that at this mm -hmm. point because. They're, they're gonna just like it's it's uh, it's slowly becoming something that you can lobby about. It's like the uh, the penny problem, you know oh. how like really we need penny reform and that like pennies shouldn't exist because mm -hmm. they're worthless. Okay. They're actually like they cost us more money to make than they're worth. <laughs> it costs like seven cents to make a penny. Did you know that? I, I didn't know that. Yeah, the pennies pennies are a problem, but so we've needed penny reform for years, but pennies. You don't get anybody fired up about pennies, right? So it's not something you can lobby for. You're not going to say, like, when I become president, there will be no more pennies. Nobody cares. Yeah, it's not abortion. It's not well, uh, It's we... not the economy. It's not It's not anything else that the normal people right. uh, so are, are going to respond to. Thing, like, the more huge cases that we have, like Apple versus Samsung, the more it enters the public mind, the mm -hmm. more that... And the more uh, tech-minded and science-minded that our candidates and their constituency becomes, mm -hmm. the more sense it'll make for somebody to say, uh, as, as a congressman, as a senator, even as a president, for them to say, one of the things that I will get behind is the, uh, the reformation and the, the rebuilding of our intellectual property laws, of our copyright laws, and of our patent laws, because they are inherently broken. Because right now, your parents don't care about that. It needs to be more than just Al Franken caring, and, and, and hopefully it's to the point where it, it's probably going to end up to the point where they start like taking Samsung popular phones off the shelf before anybody notices. Right. In the long run, so. Get, uh, get wait, there, wait, 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 hold what, on. What, what, what? Let's go back to this whole penny thing. <laughs> Let's so, bring it down a level and talk pennies. So, what do you do? Do you round down to the nearest like five cents, or That's the whole debate? Yeah. Like, how would you how would you successfully get rid of a penny? You should get rid of nickels too while we're at it. But so you would have to you would have to round it off to the nearest dime. It's yeah. like eleven cents to produce a nickel or something yeah. like that. So I mean, at this point, at this rate, we might as well just get rid of all change whatsoever. But what will I put in my jars? I know. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you notice the trend, it costs seven cents to make a penny. It's got to be more a, to make a, a nickel. Eleven cents to make a nickel. Maybe about six to make a dime. And I would say probably 12 or 13 cents to make a dime. No, no, it's smaller. And then more to make a quarter. At this rate, you might as well just get rid of all pennies. That's a tax, or all, man. all change. Why are you taxing me? It's fun. All right, before we turn into a political show. Yeah, this is bad. Let's see, you see what we have for wrestling. I right? was just curious. Okay, all right, all right. I have current, uh, well, it's not current. It's four years I don't off. Like so we're going to say. Uh, it definitely takes seven cents to make a nickel. It costs four cents to make a dime, ten cents to make a quarter, sixteen cents for a dollar bill, or sixteen cents for a dollar coin, six cents for a dollar bill. Dollar coin. <laughs> I don't know. What do we do? It's 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 yeah. It's, it's what, are you trying thing. to solve it on this program? Right. I am. No is one's leaving happening? until we solve the penny problem. Yeah, well, we need to solve. This is an issue that we need to solve. Hmm. Now. Do we just nix all change? Let's leave it up to the chat room. Yeah, chat it's... room, tell us what to do. How do we <laughs> solve the penny problem? All of AJ, you, save us now. Talk amongst yourselves, have a problem, and present it, present it to us by the end of the show. And go. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on there. Um, so, uh, there was a, a pretty big event happened over the weekend, I believe, called the Hugo Awards. Um, pretty big uh, uh, media, you know, event. Uh, you know, it's like any other award show. They, they show clips of of things, uh, clips clips of programs. Um, it was being streamed on UStream. Oh, favorite. I heard that. I heard that. Um, 
Uh, I'm hearing bottle stuff over there. Oh. Um, Rob sent me a video about pennies. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So apparently, uh, during during the course of Neil Gaiman, uh, of course, wrote a, a, a couple episodes of uh, Doctor Who, and he was really receiving that's where you it. go. That's where you go. F- that's where you go to. That that's that's where the story goes to. If you let me finish here, because um, during during him uh, started to uh, uh, give his acceptance speech after they showed clips of Doctor Who, uh, they got pulled off of Ustream for copyright infringement by bots. And, uh, and this is a show that had the clips approved by all the studios that they're using. This was a pretty good production, you know, and uh, unable to take it off, of me- take turn it back on immediately because the box had t- taken them down and Ustream would not respond to, uh, to the issue. Um, whoop, there's Rob. Um, so uh, I, I, it sounds like that someone at Ustream doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Well, they're letting a bot service... Called. I agree. I think it's one of those things where somebody called and said, "Thank you for calling Ustream. <laughs> Our offices are closed. Yeah. Please call back on Tuesday, and we'll be happy to help you." But this is another case where uh, something that was like an, an in the moment thing because nobody wants to watch yeah. this afterwards. Everybody's there to watch it live. Uh, it's old news afterwards. Um, they're doing the production to be watched live and talked about on Twitter or whatever live, and they get pulled down because of, they did everything right. They got all their all their things lined up but apparently the bot took it down because it recognized something like the doctor who clips or whatever else they showed um and i mean we, we've seen this with a lot of things uh tnt uh, tech news today got taken down uh for uh showing some uh, universal clips uh nasa even got taken down for using their own footage because well, it got picked up in a new another news program which got imprinted by the drm now in response ustream did come back and they did suspend the vobile uh vobile DRM uh, uh, after the outrage over the weekend of the Hugo Awards takedown, uh, which is the automated DRM responsible for this. So, uh, what are you saying, Chachi? Every other corporation in the world has access to turn this stuff off immediately. Mm -hmm. Which is why I said someone at Ustream doesn't know how to do their job. Or they're leaving it up to an automated system. I mean, it's the same thing that you see on YouTube. But on, on Ustream's side, they have the access to turn that off. The DRM, yes, like the yeah. the bot, the bot. They have the right, the access to turn that off mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that's like any other uh, web censoring tool. Mm-hmm. And, like and, even at my firm, yeah, at the drop of a dime, we can turn off our our software. So say our our uh, our website blocking software isn't working correctly, we can turn that off as soon as we want it off. Mm-hmm. But this is this is more along the lines of policy than software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, and we're, policy, as we all know, takes forever to turn off. Because Shaji, remember the issues we had when we were doing uh, coverage of E3? We got we got a lot of stuff taken down for copyright infringement from Twitter with no response, and that's their policy. How they deal with something like that, and how long it was like a week before you didn't even hear anything from them. Okay, there's a difference between my stuff getting pulled and your own stuff getting pulled off. Yeah, yeah. And something that they have permission permission for, mm-hmm. and something set up through another co- company. Here's here's something interesting, and, and now I've become a slight victim of my own thing. Um, somewhere along the line, whoever I put my old music with our old rap group crap, um, there's a lot of videos that have some of the music, and even some of the stuff I put up that's performances of the very same music. I'm starting to get tagged for my own music in my own videos. Hmm. as copyright infringements. Now, I'm going through the process. I have to do it as it finds everyone and say, no, this is mine. And usually it lets go of it. Just like we had an issue a few weeks ago where uh, somebody used a clip that we had brought in for the Wrestling Mayhem show uh, that was WWE content, but we said, hey, it was commentary as fair use. They did release it and unblock it. Uh, now, they're not blocking it, thankfully. And it's through, it's through, and I have to figure out what happened to my rights that it's gotten captured by somebody else called, like, Rift, Rift Tracks or something like that. Um, but, uh, but, but, again, this is one of those things where my stuff has gotten picked up under somebody else's label as being my stuff. Maybe maybe somebody else used my same track in, in their thing, which could be fair use or whatever. They got it under their imprint. And now it's tagging my stuff, even though it's mine. 
that's what happened to NASA. Their footage got picked up by some news program. It got, became part of their imprint because they used the clip. And now it came around and NASA got tagged as if they were, they were infringing. This is just all the automated processes. You know, as, as you know, with Apple, we're getting like more hands-on people power doing this. And there's the plus and minus of that. This is what happens. Could you imagine if they did an automated system like this on, on Apple iTunes? That'd be horrible. It'd be even more indescript than uh, what we usually get now when things get torn, taken down. And we see less of that these days, I think. So, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, you, what do you guys think? Any last comments on this before we move on? Nope. Nope. Uh, I told you what it's I think. It's a broken thing that will get fixed eventually. Automation Hopefully. stinks. Hopefully. It does. Automation is bad when it comes to IP. Yes. Yeah. Somebody, all that automation put a sensor person out of business or out of a job. Mm. Just like, just like the automation took, put the uh, Walmart employee out of the job. Yeah. See. There you go. All right. What else we got here, Rob? What do you? The, you added something to the doc here. Uh oh. Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, hacker group um, called Anti-Sac. The all I heard was sack. Hold on. Oh, yeah, uh, your phone got hacked. Uh, that thing. It's loading. So, uh, the, for some unknown reason, the FBI had a laptop that had uh, a few million UDIDs, uh, Apple Unique Device Identifiers for iPads, iPhones, and the like. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on this laptop. Um, I think it's something like 12 million, some giant, yeah, 12, 12 million, 12 million, 367,232 Apple iOS device. UDIDs. Why is this bad? Because it ties things to like your iTunes password, your billing addresses, your payment data, all that good stuff. It's, um, it's like having a social security number for your phone, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. pretty much. Um, <clears throat> so uh, anonymous claims to be involved with this. Uh, I just read that a second ago, but um, the group uh, AntiSec uh, has this, has the list. And they shared one million of the twelve million up on Pastebin uh, mm -hmm. to prove that they actually had them. And lucky for us, LastPass has put together a handy little tool. You can go to LastPass.com/udid, uh, and you can put in the uh, first five or six digits of your UDID, which you can get by plugging your phone into your computer, opening up iTunes, and uh, when you click on your phone, it'll have your little serial number. Just click on that serial number, you'll see your UDID. You can mm -hmm. use that. Stick that information in the last pass checker, and it'll tell you if it is in the information that has been posted on Pastebin, which unfortunately does not necessarily mean you're safe if it comes up clean, because like I said, they only posted one million of the 12 million. So, so uh, it says that you're not one of those out in the clear or out in the uh, open at the moment. Yes, that's so. all that says. So then uh, the question is, um, what are they going to do with this information? If anything, are they going to sell it? Are they going to try and leverage it? As with most cases of digital theft, even if like if you if I if I have a list of twelve million things and it's a text file, and I say give me five million dollars and I'll give you the list, it just means that I still have a copy of the list and you now have a copy of that list, so it's not really safe. Everybody has a copy of the list. Hey, uh, change your passwords, as always. <laughs> as always, exactly. Don't run Java. Yeah, I'm starting to invest in like the last pass and the two-step authentication well, myself. Awesome. It, it, it's I, I'm, I need to get into it and actually like put the money in so I can use it on the iPhone. Right now, I was just kind of saving everything on my computer, I guess. I don't necessarily so. use it on my phone, except for the fact if I'm on somebody else's computer and I need to remember what that... Um, that password was but i'm thoroughly addicted to it mm -hmm. um and it's it's actually really good and i mean i don't have to worry about passwords anymore or schemes or anything like that yeah because well the idea is this thing saves it and i can be a little more inventive and creative with my passwords and not have to worry about you know my bonehead self work forgetting about it right and the nice thing for you is is you actually can have your own database so you actually have something to hold on to it's not just you know, in the web or, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, you have your, your own database so that if you know the password, you have your database, boom, you can open it up and there you go. Nice. So. Nice. Yeah. I, I need to invest a little bit more time in setting it up, but yeah, I've been starting to put it on a lot of my, you know, yep. getting the plug in for Chrome, wherever, wherever I find myself logging into things and, you know, wherever I can. So yeah. 
There you go. Um, what else is out there? So this was a, I, you know, I've been seeing a lot of uh, technology uh, with disabilities. Of course, you know, we're doing a lot of stuff with uh, Unsung where we, um, with uh, ALS and, and some of the technologies uh, uh, that enable people there. Uh, and I'm always interested in seeing how uh, uh, stuff like iPads and, and all this new stuff are being used uh, in education. Uh, school in Albany, actually, Albany, New York, uh, and there's actually a video that goes along with this. Uh, school acquires iPads for use in teaching students with autism. Um, pretty much, you know, what you would expect. It's something easy with sounds, you know, uh, easy to use interface. Uh, in the video that they were showing, they were actually uh, showing them using it to uh, learn f fractions. Um, and and it's, it's, it seems pretty nice, though, what they're doing with it. Um, and you're hearing about this more and more about, you know, just that accessibility. You know, we've, we've talked about, like, how young people are really getting on with the iPads and everything. Um, and, and this is great to see, like, this kind of, uh, uh, you know, launch program. And I guess Albany is probably a smaller school system. I mean, Albany is a smaller town, right? So. Sure. All right. I don't know. <laughs> cool story, bro. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, well, how about the president being on Reddit? Anybody read any of that? Uh, sure. Yeah. That was kind of a thing. <laughs> it was Reddit's biggest day um, with the president on there. Is even, they even included this nice picture of him proving he's at a computer using Reddit. They just copied Dig. There he is. They <laughs> just copied Dig. It's an uglier Dig in the long run, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, really. Derp -derp. <laughs> All right. Um, what else we got here? That's actually all the stories I have. Is there anything you guys, Chachi? What's going on at InsertCoinToBegin.com? Stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. No, uh, Thanks. Steam is actually going into the hardware business. Is this for real this time? This is not just a rumor. Have they no. announced anything? No. But um, hold on. Let me bring it up. I'll tell you the job <laughs> title they're looking for. Oh, they did this before though. Where they're like they're the people oh, read read on. the read the between the tea leaves of the of the not steam valve I'm valve sorry. well valve is steam uh they're looking for an industrial designer uh and they have gone on the record to say that uh they are they want to create a new user uh, experience mm -hmm. and saying that even uh basic input such as keyboard and mouse hasn't changed functionality in years. So they want to improve on that as well. So they want to make the mouse is what I'm hearing. They want to make new everything. <laughs> Didn't the mouse just turn 40? They're, oh. they're looking for a way to create a better gaming experience overall. Okay. Yeah, they want to make some peripheral. Power glove. At least. So this may not mean actually a new console like has been Your face. No, suspected. No. I, right? That would be way far out. No, 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 no. They would be hiring a, a very large team of people if they were in that neighborhood. But just hiring an industrial designer means that they have ideas and they want somebody to give it shape. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, was this on here we were talking about uh, uh, <sighs> Valve was in talks with OnLive for a bit? I think I heard that somewhere else. One of the, one of the things that came out with the whole with the, with the CEO getting getting booted from the New Deal and everything was that some no, of the, the CEO was the only one who didn't get booted from the New Deal. I think it got turned around. No, because uh, I heard the employees went in and uh, and said, "Hey, uh, we're not sticking around if he is," because a lot of stories start coming out uh, that he's the reason a lot of the bigger deals weren't going through. Like they started talking to say Steam and. Uh, they, he started trumping up that they wanted basically Steam to take a big part in on live and become basically, you know, buy out a good portion of them. And it really kind of scared Steam away. Ooh. Valve, of course, uh, was one of the stories that's been talked about in the last week. So some of the insider stuff. This look he's giving me. This I look just he's don't giving care. Me. You just don't care? You're the video game guy. You better yeah. care. You better care. This is your beat, man. I lost interest in on live. Yeah, we kind of burned that one down last two weeks ago. When you, we? it, well, there's the fact that we 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 talked about uh, it, we talked about it two weeks in a row, mm -hmm. and the fact that when you fire all of your employees, it's like forget you. Yeah, I, I'm kind of done with you. Yeah, yeah. 
there, there's nothing more that I can say that'll bring this horse back to life. I'm hoping, I'm hoping whoever owns it does a better job with it. And whatever, whatever the, you know, former crackpot CEO did I, to run it into the ground. I give it six months. You give it six months before. Yep. I don't know. It's got new money behind it, so I imagine it lasts a little bit longer. Gaikai, Gaikai will own it in six to eight. Gaikai months. will. Well, Sony will own it because Sony owns Gaikai. Right. So, all right. I got one more in, in the dock. Uh, so we, we we've been talking about what's going on with the uh, uh, the API with Twitter the last few weeks. One of the answers kind of became clear. I mean, I know I've been kind of wondering if I'm still going to use Hootsuite after the next few weeks as, as things keep going down. Uh, but in the past week, uh, Twitter announced the uh, certified products. So now you have a seal of approval. This reminds me of the old Nintendo way where you had your seal of approval in the games. In, in a little bit, right? So. Well, hmm. well, I mean, you know, I feel like everything I say starts with that. Uh, they're <laughs> looking to uh, get a firmer gris, grisp, grip and grasp uh, on the user experience of their of their what is just their API, essentially, which is something that I don't think many software companies have done, really. No, it's sort of like Microsoft um, putting out a a list of required features for, and not like functional features. I mean, like like usability features for pieces of hardware to have in order for it to run their software, which honestly doesn't sound like a terrible idea, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's like it's like giving conditions for IP where like you can only use this sentence in positive context or something like that um so twitter is saying that they will let other people develop things for them as long but as it doesn't suck as long as it doesn't suck exactly which is not necessarily a bad thing so there could be a whole turnaround in the scenario where everything that they made really difficult for developers right now if you become an approved app maybe you get a much more lenient treatment uh, the categories that has everything so far uh, looks like it's engagement products, analytic products, and data reseller project. Pro uh, sorry, products. Um, and it goes to a site where uh, you have like certain badges and everything for what they're certified for. Um, I find this interesting because this is another place me as as somebody that works with people's social media and trying to find tools. You know, instead of you know, Twitter kind of provides. Hey, these are the best tools out there. You know, stuff I maybe never heard of before. Of course, Hootsuite is in there, so I know that uh, it, it's going to be supported through and through, so I can stick with that. Uh, other stuff like Radian 6, Sprinkler, stuff I haven't uh, checked out before. Um, and everybody sees my message. Oh, no, they don't. Uh, data Miner, Exact Target. Um, so, I mean, it, it's kind of nice to be able to go in here and say, hey, as a professional, I don't have to just go out and search Twitter products and go out on my own and try to figure it out. Here's the stuff that are working the way that they intend it to work in the mm -hmm. instead of getting like kind of a half-assed this is a project this is in an alpha this is in a beta it says hey these are these are the these are the real deal you know and because i i always wondered with all these changes were they going to solve the problem and have these kind of products brought out by twitter on the back end like have business solutions which they do have business solutions but they are also certifying this, these for business solutions as well so I, at least it's becoming a little clearer. It's, it's still crap what they're doing to some of the uh, guys out there. Like Tweetbot kind of got half shut down uh, a week or two ago. Um, but they're being seen as mimicking Twitter's functions, I guess. So Twitter's just being real protective, and I guess they got every right to be. The moral of the story is... Don't build your house on every somebody else's foundation. Don't, uh... don't release crap. <laughs> It's not no, that doesn't though. have anything no, it's to not do crap. with it. No, no, it's, no, no. No, because here's the thing: you, you mentioned now oh, what well, you know. It's an approved app, or it, like everything else, it depends on what they do with it. Mm -hmm. And the, the the thing is, if I if I create a Twitter client and I get approved because it's not a piece of crap, and I have you know 400 people that use it, and it's not a piece of crap. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I looked over. That's what I saw. Grandma looked there, um, and it's fine. And I'm approved, and everybody knows. Hey, this is not a piece of crap. So then I get four thousand, mm -hmm. and then I get four million. At mm -hmm. what point in time, when I start threatening Twitter, do they say, "Oh, well, you know, you were protected, or whatever the hell that label is," but you know, now you're too big.
exactly what happened. Well, yeah. What what they do in that particular point is is they change the APIs and then my app no longer works and then it becomes a piece of crap and then I lose my label and I don't get millions of dollars. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, I, what, at least at least there's a bit of a roadmap now that we can follow and 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 I feel bad for some of the developers, but. Yeah, and it's not it's not all crap developers. It, it, it is seriously people doing good things. Tweetbot is a great app. I think there's people in the chat room who yeah. agree. Tweetbot is a great app. A lot of people use it on their phones. That's uh, the one I use. The Mac Alpha has been great. You know, basically all that happened for those that didn't hear. Uh, Tweetbot did pull their uh, Mac yeah. OS X Alpha yeah. from being downloaded uh, because supposedly because they didn't want to use up any more of their uh, API keys or, or or you know whatever it is they're being limited on there. So. So there you go. All right, guys. On that note, that's all I got. If anything, anybody else has anything to throw in there? Nope. 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 You nope. good? Nope. That's all you got you, you excited about this week, guys? Um. So, hey, Brian, Dab of Tech, at Dab of Tech on the Twitters. Yo. Go check him out. What are you talking about over there? What are you talking uh, about? Nothing. Not Twitter about nothing. Um, beer. Beer. Uh, Gator paid. What? Um, that's about it. What do you do? What do you mean? What do I do? We didn't tell. What do? What do you do? Why are you here? Why are you a tech head? I'm a consultant. There you go. There you go. Uh, no, I mean, that's what I do. So tonight, actually, when I go home, Windows Server 2012 just came out today. So I'll be loading that and checking that out. There you uh, go. AJ will not because he's afraid. He's afraid of new technology. Unless, uh, unless, unless it has yes, and I'm calling him out. Unless, <laughs> unless, unless it is Apple, in which case he will line up and take it like a man. Uh, there's there's actually an event in the chat room that's being pinned by your wife. If you want to throw that out there. Uh, okay, yeah. I don't know no. if you know anything about it. Yes, we have a rabbit, and I have to. No, not the rabbit thing. Wow. <laughs> no, so September 12th. There's a co PYP pod camp event going on, free for everybody. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I need to teach you how to pimp things like I do chocolate. Yeah, you know. But <laughs> hey, everybody, back up your computers, run your antivirus, and disable Java in your browser. Do those three things. Don't run go. Java. Yeah, what he said. Rob De La Cray is at robjdlc.com. Also on the Twitter under the same name. Mm. He tweets about things. I do. I get angry about things. He does. He does. Go ask him he about fancy sometime. You kids and your Dre Beats headphones. <laughs> I heard they're what? awesome. What is your problem with the Dre Beats? Die in a fire. So what? You cancel my what is order? your problem with the Dre Beats? Oh, they're actually terrible. I mean, I'm not kidding. They are awful. I've heard that before. Yeah. And, and I'm not. I'm not being like snooty. I Dude, mean, like you no, are getting I, incredibly uh, reamed for how much money you pay on those. I, I'm you just, pay half that and get headphones that are like audio wise are years ahead of them. I it's trust a, your judgment. It's a terrible case of paying for a badge. That's all it is. Okay, so they're just not good. No, they're not good. They're bad. <laughs> they're well, bad. I, all I ever hear is you saying, yeah, these suck. But, well, because of they suck. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not, you never God. say in what capacity is do they the suck. Is it the fidelity? Is it the bass? Oh, is it, okay. I mean, what 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 is it about them other than they just sound bad? They sound like garbage. Okay. Does that seem yeah. Yeah. Same thing with uh, Diesel makes headphones that are like they look no. really cool. <laughs> Total the, crap. What's happening over there on the couch? What did you do? You broke the thing. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about <laughs> that. You're the only one that sees that. Um, oh. No, we were. Uh, Bobby in the chat room asked if any titles came up, and when I read Brian, it, Brian, I thought that Brian said misread else. it, and he's like, "Does that say what I think it says?" <laughs> so. All right, we'll talk about that in a second. Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, Chachi is at insertcointobegin.com. At Chachi says on Twitter, he is a hoot to follow. Yeah? What? I don't know. I am a hoot to follow. <laughs> Good. I am the best damn Twitterer on the planet. There you go. Hey, using Are you a guru? Of Twitter? Yeah. I guess. Apparently we never it long enough. Apparently we never spelled loot crate and it was in a, it was a confusing thing on Google Plus when uh, somebody asked about it. What? Loot crate. We misspelled it. Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't spell it, so nobody could figure out what we were talking about. Oh, how do you spell loot crate wrong? I, <laughs> what are you talking Apparently about? Apparently, they couldn't figure out what we were saying. Oh, what is the word that you are saying? I'm loot confused. crate. 
Loot crate? Loot crate. Oh, go listen to last week's episode and get pissed off because I gave away free advertising space. Like L O O T C R A T E? Yes. Yes. Dot com. Okay. Chachi was in the newsletter. Oh. Yeah. Pimpin. Hell. Pimpin. I'll have to unsubscribe from that news. And of course, I'm over at storytronmedia.com. Check out everything going on, including uh, Unsung. Uh, Check out our newsletter with stuff going on. I'm still doing uh, social media tips on there and stuff. Uh, Wait, wait, wait. Zero 2K says maybe you were playing garbage songs. Oh! Uh, oh. Take that. Um. I can't even think of a good comeback. I really can't. <laughs> he will after the show. I Thanks, will. guys, again. Uh, please join us here. We're at awesomecast.com. You can join us every week at live.sogertronmedia.com. I believe live.awesomecast.com gets you there, too. Right? Yeah, yeah, good, totally good, does. Good, good. Um, so go check that out. Uh, again, uh, at awesomecast. Um, check us out on Facebook, on your Google+. Plus. Ask us any questions and uh, move on with the show. Hashtag us. Hashtag AC117 for this show if there's anything in particular. And uh, let us know your tech news. What do, you want, what do you want us to converse about and join us in the chat room here every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern roundabouts. Thanks to Brian for joining us, for Rob and Chachi for our awesome audit, our awesome um, chat room. As usual, you're our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Chachi's ass. Do you like that showing? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what? Laughing. Grove. That's what I was thinking. How do you like my ass? <laughs> How do you like my ass? <laughs> uh, I like when it makes the noise. <clears throat> wink. <laughs> wink. <laughs> it goes wink, but there's a show title. I can't. <laughs> you know, did you know that the, the uh, what is it, the sphincter? I think it's the sphincter. It's the strongest muscle in the human body. Did you know that? Did you test it? Rob's status is full of boners. Yeah, I know. I love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Chronically full of boners. I don't know what that means. Does it mean you uh, constantly have a boner or you constantly have boners in you? I'd, I'd say the latter, yeah. I, it's it's a quantum state of potential boner. Oh, okay. So next time I'm at the gym, I can just say I'm working on my sphincter. The boner is not real. <laughs> the boner is not real. The boner is not real. The boner inside the box is both erect and flaccid <laughs> at the same time. Ooh. ooh. Schrodinger's boner. All right. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay. What is going on? It, no Sorg's been trying to start the show for, for like five minutes. Oh, uh, I love it when he, yeah, I can see him on the camera I and he's got like his mouth half open like, and, and welcome to Awesome Cat. Oh, hey. So far in the chat room. Fuck you. <laughs> so far in the chat room we have, hi, awesome ass. Ooh. <laughs> Squats. The boner is quite real. And mm. like Portal, the boner is a lie. Mm, the boner is <laughs> its not a lie when it comes to your mom. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need a bell. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sure glad I came down for this. Oh, wow. Uh, man. We should just the internet. The, <laughs> the internet. HTTP, baby. <laughs> <laughs>
You sit by the <laughs> control board. I could just mute all of you. Yeah. Exactly! <laughs> but that's too much work, and I ain't got to find all my levels again. Uh-oh. All right, let's shut right, up. Right? Let's shut up so Sorkin... Remember my goal tonight? Not fucking happening. <laughs> it will happen. Oh, uh, we'll see. What, to start on time? Well, that was one of them, yeah. I wanted to have everything recorded by our 10 o'clock interview. Oh. Hmm, good luck. <laughs> yeah. All right, go.